Hey guys, it's Tomatoda, and today I'm going to show you how to make a Captain America shield cane. It's a fairly simple cane in my opinion, which is why I want to do, do this. His shield is, you know, it has nice colors and I think it would be a good place to start as a beginner clay person. So I do hope that this tutorial is something that you guys can follow along to start your cane journey if you are a little bit nervous about trying it out. And let's begin! So first, I have all my clay pieces rolled out through the pasta machine on the thickest setting. You want to roll the white one first so you get less uh, contamination from the other colors. And then I would do red and then blue. And the tools we're going to need besides the basics are a star cookie cutter. Oh, I should clean that. I got this one at Michael's. It comes in a whole set of different shapes, but I'm going to use this one because it's the smallest star that I have. And then we're going to use a blade. This is called a tissue blade, I believe. I got it on Amazon. I do need to get a new one because I've been using this one for about maybe two years, I think. Well, there was a set of two and I've been switching them in and out. Just, I don't know, hoping if I give them a rest that they will get sharp again. But you know, that's, that's not reality. But yeah, so I need to get new ones, but this is what I have. And because it's not sharp, I use this. Uh, I got this one on AliExpress and I'm not 100% sure the way I'm supposed to use it, but I like to do the rough edge first and then put it through the fine grit one and it does get sharper so i'm just happy with that now here is an image of the captain america star logo and typically when you start a cane you want to go from inner details to the outer details typically not always but usually which means that we are going to start off with the star in the middle Taking the, I forgot to clean it again. I don't know, I was just busy talking and then I forgot to clean it, but I'll be right back. Now I did clean my uh, cookie cutter as much as possible, but as you can see, it's not like that much cleaner inside and it is still kind of wet. So I need to make sure that it is fully dried before I start because the clay that I am using is called Fimo Professional and it's uh, not the best when it comes to water. It will soften it up too much. And the reason why I use Fimo Professional is because of the stiffness. So adding water and making it soft kind of uh, defeats the purpose. So let me, I don't know, shake it off or something. I, whatever. So we're going to start stamping off some star shapes. Maybe about five of these. That was not satisfying at all. Then they are stuck to the table. So I'm going to use my knife and just shimmy them off, shimmy them off. Now taking our stars, we're going to stack them on top of each other and try to make sure that there is uh, less air in between each layer as possible. So start from one end and then kind of like push it. Make sure it's like about airtight. I don't know, something like that. Sorry, this video is not scripted and you guys know when I don't do things scripted, I'm a little bit all over the place. But I thought this would be the best explained without a script and just like live, so to say, because then I don't know, I can be more specific. Hmm. Did any of that make sense? I don't know. Anyways, here are the five stacked on top of each other. And I think this is a good height for a small cane and you can go larger if you want. If you have a, um, so say for instance, that if your star is about this big, then you might want to go higher because uh, typically what I would think is 
two thirds of this cane will likely not be usable because when you reduce it, the ends do warp, right? So just think of it like that. If you have a bigger star, you're gonna have more unusable ends. So you wanna stack more on top. Now I'm going to pinch just to kind of make everything a bit uniformed, but you don't want to ruin the initial star shape. Then we're gonna set this aside and we're going to bring in our blue clay. The stars were five layers, so one layer, two layer, three layer. Now I need to make two more layers. I'm gonna pull this through the pasta machine one more time. Actually go ahead and do six layers. It's been a while since I've done this, so I'm a little bit rusty, but yeah, do six layers. Okay, then stack them on top of each other. Remember not to let air bubbles in as much as possible because that's gonna leave cracks later on. I'm gonna push this through and the pressure is actually going to expand the size. So even though it's this thick, once the pressure hits, it's going to like, you know, when you squish a sandwich, yeah. And then press it in. Once that is through, hopefully it's through. Yeah, it's through. And then kind of like squeeze around it just to make sure that it fits the, the cookie cutter shape. I want to pull it out, but it's going to get stuck. So what I'm going to do is cut in here, or you can cut anywhere that you're most comfortable with, but I'm going to make an exit exit strategy because you didn't pull out fast enough Oof. you know what i mean all right i'm going to take a piece of paper a piece of scrap paper i'm going to take a pen draw the outline and then I'm going to draw a circle to the best of my abilities. <laughs> my hands do better with 3D, so when I actually cut it, I can make it look like a better circle. Hi, right, good enough. Taking your white star, we're going to put it in. You want to make sure it's inside as accurately as possible and flip it over to check the back side to also make sure it's accurate as possible. There we go. See, even though this was five layers and this one was six layers, it kind of sandwiched into a five layer, five layer burrito. Hoping this is an even circle. Now you want to cut straight down and it is a lot easier said than done, but you can do it. You can do it. And one thing you also want to do is check the back side. Wow. Terrible. Terrible. Uh, uh, okay. So let's flip it over and then okay so I am to left then I'm going to just adjust it this side is a little bit wonky too this side is already like good, so you don't want to mess with this. What you want to do is, so when I'm cutting like this, when I'm cutting this extra piece here, 
I'm actually fading it off from the center. So I'm going to cut and then just fade it off. What do you guys think? It's still not that great of a circle, right? I'm gonna fix just a little bit of the circle without the paper. Okay, good enough. And the edges are obviously not, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Soft? Hmm. Yes, so I'm going to soft out the edges lightly. You can use a finger or I have this extra piece of glass from a picture frame and I'm just going to lightly roll it out. Now that our center is done, we're going to move on and bring out our red. It's gonna be easy from here on out because basically we're just gonna be wrapping. Not M&M wrapping, but like sausage wrapping. Going to measure the distance here and here. Then bring it to the side and then do the same thing so that I can make a straight measurement. So our strip is done. We're going to wrap it around. And I've said this a million times, make sure that there is the least amount of air bubbles trapped inside as much as possible. Now we've reached our end. By doing like this small action, you can kind of gauge where the end is going to be. So here is where the mark was left, but I'm gonna cut just a little bit before that. Oh, and my blade is upside down, ha. Huh. Be careful, when you have a new blade, it'll probably cut you. And whoa, that was a little too much, but I'm gonna make it work. Yeah, there's a gap, but I'm gonna make it work. I'm going to just... It's, it's only a little tiny gap. Okay. Right. I'm gonna <laughs> roll it with even pressure. Now, um, because I've been using red and blue, your surface area is going to be contaminated. What you wanna do is take half of a Clorox wipe and then you wanna store the other half in a uh, plastic baggie. It's a, you know, used plastic baggie and just store it so it doesn't lose its moisture. And it might not be sanitary, but we aren't using this Lysol wipe for sanitary purposes. We're using it to just clean the colors off of our uh, workspace. And to clean it off of our fingers. Especially because we are now going to use white. I know this white is really dirty. Excuse moi. Oh, and don't forget to also wipe off your blade. It has colors as well. Cut off the end. We're going to wrap it around just like we did before. And the mark is right here. So I'm gonna do just a little bit less than I did with the red because I messed up a little on that red and <sighs> man. I'm gonna make it work. There we go. Then I'm going to roll it. Rolling, rolling, rolling. Keep those prices rolling. Now for the last one, we're going to need a layer of red. Unfortunately, this is not enough. So I have to take all the scraps and redo that process. There we go. Whoa, that one was perfect. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, gonna roll it. 
And then I'm going to cut off that excess. Now typically what I like to do here is I will separate the layers as much as I can and then uh, use reuse them. Like this one is too contaminated so there's no way you can reuse it. This goes into scrap but these can actually go back into the red pile so you don't waste clay. So our cane is done. This is what it looks like on the front. This is what it looks like on the back. We're going to reduce. When you reduce, you want to squeeze the outer side with equal pressure, equally, as much as possible. Just try your best. You don't want to roll it until the very end. You want to just squeeze it. I like to usually start from the center and instead of like actually pressing in the center, because this is so thin, I'm going to use the whole surface. It fits on the whole surface. But if your cane is like this thick, then you know you have no other choice but to start squeezing from the middle and then go out. Now in terms of basics of reducing, it's something that I don't know if I have any... Okay, I'll find that in the... I'll find the English translation for that later. But um, I don't know if I have really the chagyok to kind of explain how it's done because I also struggle with reducing and I learned from watching Clay Zhu's videos. He has a tutorial on how to reduce canes circular and square. So I mean he is the master. You know I always talk about him but he he is the master. He's been doing it for about 13 years versus you know me I've been doing it for like two years. So if you can see, it's uh, yeah, stretching out. Then once the center is like stretched out well enough, you want to move towards the end and also make it into the same width. Then flip it over and make it into the same width. And you're just gonna keep doing this until the cane is the size that you want it to be. Imagine if your vagina looked like this. <laughs> Ooh, this one looks kind of like a butthole. Alright, I think this is like a good enough uh, size for me to at least get a couple slices out of it. So I'm going to take I'm gonna take my roller glass and then I'm just going to roll it even. I'm not using this to make it any smaller. I'm just using it to even out the sides to smooth everything out together. The moment of truth. Now, um, before you cut the cane, I will advise you, if you want, to put it in the freezer for a minimum of 50 minutes. I have left it in the freezer for about two days because I forgot about a cane before. Actually, I've left one in for a week and my husband's like, why is this in here? Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, you can freeze it for a minimum of 50 minutes um, and then cut it up. But be a little bit fast if you are using Fimo because remember when I said when you use water, it makes Fimo kind of mushy and then the condensation makes it a bit mushier than it would normally be. But you have that minute to cut. I don't know exactly if it's the condensation that makes it mushy, but it does happen a lot quicker with uh, Fimo than it did with Primo. Now I am going to begin. And then you also want to roll it while you're cutting it because I didn't freeze mine. So it's gonna warp a little bit, but if you kind of like roll it out. Mm. 
And now, because I need Instagram content, I'm going to flip this over and act like I didn't slice it before and slice it to show the reveal because I was talking previously. I didn't even record. <laughs> um, sorry, I forgot to record. Um, but this is the scrap leftover canes. Like I said before, it's gonna be about two fifths of the of the whole body. And then these are ones that I shaped. I'm gonna put it on a piece of paper so I can put it in the oven really easily. So basically, um, some of these are wonky shaped. You can reshape it with your hands. Uh, one way I like to do is kind of stretch out certain areas. That's gross. And then push it in with my fingers to make it rounder. Flip it over, make sure it's also round. And then flatten it out on the piece of paper. Okay, so after looking, I think this one has the most air bubbles inside, if you can see this. I think it's mostly an end cane, that's why. But if you kind of like squeeze it in, it fills in the air bubbles. You don't want to use too much pressure. Just light, even pressure. Now that this is done, I'm gonna pop it into my oven for the full time required and I'll be back. Okay, now everything is fully baked and we're going to clean it. Let me show you, there is one particularly dirty bitch. Oh, this one here, okay. So if you need to clean up like specific Details, I would recommend using a Q-tip with acetone. But if it's a general surface that you want to wipe, use a cotton pad. So first, let me do this one. All right, I think these black dots is because my white clay was contaminated. As you saw before, that it was very dirty. Then for the rest, I'm just going to put it on some Q-tip, I mean, cotton pad, and wipe the general surface. Now you wanna be careful because red does bleed a lot. Blue does bleed as well, but red bleeds even more. So if you have a particularly like sur dirty surface that you want to clean, just like rub it and then use, see how the red kind of uh, bled onto the white, use the clean surface and just give it one swoop, one swipe. So, uh, yeah. Oh shit. Also, you're going to notice that in person, uh, the fresh, the fresh side is kind of shiny. It has a sheen to it versus the acetoned side is matted. It has no shine to it. Yeah, and then just whatever dust you see, fingerprints, um, the acetone is going to get it very well. I just wish that the acetone didn't dry out so fast, but you know, that's the nature of the chemical. That's it. All right, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you next week. Bye.